Another day, another bombshell that lands with a thud. Imagine a loaf of bread hitting the pavement from the roof of your house. That's the New York Times report on Trump's old tax returns. Oh, Pillsbury Cronkite, is this one of the most important stories of the past five years? This is one of the most important stories of the past five years. Not one of the most important stories of this year, but one of the most important stories of the past five years. I'd say his hair is on fire, but too late for that. Now, because this story involves numbers, it's hard on the media. They couldn't tally a 20% tip on a dollar beer. But sorry, guys, no laws were broken. And sorry, CNN, no signs of Russia here. Because if there were either of those, that would have been the lead. Instead, it's Trump knows taxes. Trump said it long ago, if you don't follow the tax laws, you're stupid. Because the alternative is to make stuff up and send extra cash to Uncle Sam, who pay people like Biden to nap. Here's a tip. When you own real estate, depreciation and maintenance can outpace the rent you get. You deduct that. And it's your accountant's duty not to cure inequality, but to legally keep as much of your cash as possible. The media assumes you won't know this. I didn't for the longest time. I had to educate myself on taxes, mortgages, and loans. I didn't learn it at school, but I did learn that Moby Dick had homoerotic underpinnings. English major. Bottom line, anyone who pays more than legally owed is an idiot. If you want to pay more, fine, write the check, sucker. But what's the bigger story for you? That this lame story lands a day before the biggest debate ever. It's a collusion of bombshells dropped by the powerful to sway an election. But as Gramps once said about failed courtships, Trump's stories are like buses. You miss one, there's another coming in 15 minutes. Except now it's every 15 seconds and all of them are lighter than air. So, Dana, I'm going to ask you a question that I often ask you, usually after the show. Is this legal? Because we don't know where this information came from, and the New York Times says they obtained it. It was provided by sources with legal access to it, so it's publicly available information, meaning it's not a bombshell. What is this? I don't get it. Well, I think there's two separate questions here, right? So, yeah. is it legal for the person to have leaked it to the New York Times. I would argue, no, I am not a lawyer, but I would imagine that that person did so under the condition of anonymity because they wanted to make sure that they wouldn't get busted for it because it is illegal to, to leak somebody's mm -hmm. personal tax information. Um, but secondly, the question is, is it legal what President Trump apparently had done with his taxes? I think you laid it out well. Um, there is no obligation to pay more than what the law requires. Exactly. Now. Some people might read this article and say, this is BS, and we need a different tax system. Like, that would be something that Congress could take up. Like, there might be a better way to do taxes that encourages better investment and figures out a way to make things more fair, et cetera. There's lots of different ways that the Congress could do that, but instead they don't. So, no, I don't think this is a bombshell in the way that it used to be. Like, bombshells would upend something. And I think you're kind of right that every 15 seconds there's another one and if you just wait a few hours and digest everything and read like you have, then you realize this is not a big a deal. However, I do think this number of 750, um, when the Biden people, first of all, they had an ad cut and swag made already to sell before the ink was dry on the, on the paper. Mm -hmm. So there's obviously there's some question there. There but you go. They have it. This is the number. This is $750. It's sort of like when Mitt Romney had that 47% gap. Like that number stuck in people's heads. So if you're a Biden voter, you can just add this to the list of reasons why you are not going to vote for President Trump. Yeah, but you're already a Biden voter. Jesse, she brings up a great point. Miraculously, oh, look, coincidentally, same, look at look at us. I know, I know. We're together. here together. It should it should be this way all the time, Jesse. Who needs them? Just us two here together, <laughs> and then we could open a bed and breakfast in Vermont, yes. like we planned. Yes, we have been planning that, and we're going to deduct <laughs> everything. We're going to lower our taxable income. Exactly. From that bed and breakfast. <laughs> exactly. And then we're going to open a chain. So so yes. here's the deal. Dana brings up this point that ha like somehow Joe had this already. I mean, this smacks that of a of an assist. That right. they're actually trying to help him. Well, Joe can't do it by himself. He relies on bombshells from the Times to keep his dead campaign alive, and that's fine. Yeah, I think the president will still win with this. When the Atlantic story dropped, Joe was at 8% leading in the polls, and three weeks later, he's leading by 7 So did that have a big impact? No. Greg, Amazon, mm -hmm. Netflix, Chevron, what do those companies have in common? 
In 2018, they all paid 0% in income taxes to the federal government. Would you say that the CEOs of those companies were bad businessmen? No, you'd call them brilliant the same way you'd say that Donald Trump is brilliant. The funny thing is this. Joe Biden, for 50 years, wrote the very tax code that Donald Trump took advantage of. <laughs> it was Obama's IRS that gave Donald Trump a $73 million refund check. It was NBC News that handed Donald Trump a half a billion dollars for The Apprentice. It was MSNBC's Morning Joe and CNN that Trump's TV made him president to this day. And it was The New York Times that covered Donald Trump's wealth and success for decades, which allowed Donald Trump to leverage his name brand and use it as licensing deals to make him millions of dollars. So this story kind of reads as the guilty conscience of the American liberal media and political establishment that have given rise to Donald Trump's wealth and fame. Can you imagine a news organization looking at a billionaire's tax records and concluding he was a bad businessman? I mean, how stupid is that? They act like the guy's got no cash flow. <laughs> and in the same article, they say he's making hundreds of millions in dollars from overseas and domestic investments from his real estate portfolio. You ask 100 people, if the, you want the real estate portfolio of Donald Trump, every single person would say yes. How does this guy have no money when we're watching his jets fly, his helicopters chopper around, we see him playing golf at Doral, we see Mar-a-Lago, we look upstairs and we see these towering skyscrapers. You're, you're saying to me that this guy doesn't know how to manage money? And now at the best part, they say at the end, the walls are closing in. Like he's about to go broke. Okay. How about he sells a property on the west side for $100 million? Or, better yet, the Clintons made $300 million after leaving the White House. I bet Donald Trump could clear that in six years. Are you auditioning for a uh, finance show on CNBC? Greg, I learned all of that <laughs> yesterday afternoon. <laughs> so, so, Martha, if this, if this comes up, I hear there's a debate tomorrow. Uh, I believe it's on this network. We're yeah. probably going to preview it Someone later. Someone should promote it so yeah, everyone should. would know. Exactly. So when this comes up, how will Donald Trump, or how should he respond to it? I guess I can't ask you that question because you're moderating. Uh, uh, how, uh, how, I mean, you're not moderating, but you're there. No, I can't that ask you this question. That would be news to Chris Wallace. Yes. I'm pretty okay. sure he thinks he's the only <laughs> oh, moderator, I forgot, I and I'm pretty sure he would Chris. Be, but no. we are going to do the... Put the pre and the post uh, show. So um, wait, how, you know, how should I, Trump I'm, respond? Obviously... I, obviously, they're going to be ready for this. I would imagine this might be a moment when you go the Hunter Biden route and you mm. talk about the $3.5 million that he got from this uh, Russian oligarch's wife who was married to the Moscow mayor. I mean, that's one possibility. But one thing I would just point out about this story journalistically, I'm always, my antenna goes up when I'm reading an in-depth piece like this, and there's a whole paragraph toward the end which poses questions like, what if <laughs> all of this is a huge national security concern? What if right. this money leads directly to Putin? What if he's the one he owes the money to? What if he used a tax write-off on the Stormy Daniels payment? Um, those are the questions that you're supposed to answer while you're writing the story. Now, they're supposed to have more stories coming, and perhaps the what-if answers, I'm, I'm in so much suspense, will be answered in those uh, later questions. But then, simultaneously, that last line uh, toward the bottom, the records do not reveal any previously unreported connections to Russia. Oh. So... Um, yeah, you know, there, there are some red flags in here for anybody who's in journalism school, that's for sure. I think the conclusion, Juan, that we could all come to from reading this article is that we all need better accountants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, we want, we want the mob accountant, you know, just no, don't he, pay no taxes. No, he didn't break the law. You know, this is a... Let me just say this. This is unbelievable to me. I mean, it's like you guys are coming after the circus and trying to clean up the streets. It's unbelievable. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. If I was earning, like, you know, a single mom, no kids, doing a job in America, making $18,000 a year, I would have paid more taxes than President Trump in his first year in office. And you say that's not a story? No, that's you a didn't. story. That affects people. It's a story for he Congress. Did. The fault and let me not just true. No, no. Not you true. guys go on and on about this is no story. This is the New York Times. You know what? For once, you should say, Donald Trump, you promised to release your taxes. Oh, well, why haven't you if it's just that? And Jesse, by the way, maybe he just keeps racking up debt 
He keeps taking out loans, and he's got a ton of debt up to his eyeballs. And that's how he continues this fraud that he's a great businessman, because he's not an obviously such a great businessman. <laughs> this is this is the reality that you guys are closing your eyes to. My eyes I are think open. you know. Hey, I don't Juan, know he loaned gonna himself move sixty-six million dollars and paid that to help his campaign to beat crooked. Do you think he's having cash flow yeah. problems? Yeah, I do think. I think it's obvious. And I'll tell you this: this is million? really incredible to me. <laughs> Ten of the fifteen years before he became president, this guy pays no taxes, and you want to excuse it? That's shameful. Sleepy right. wrote the tax code, Juan.